Welcome to Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast, where as your host each and every week, I am going to inspire you and empower you to share your message and step into that big vision you see for yourself. I'll be bringing you celebrity interviews, influencer insights, and my personal tips from decades as an on-camera talent, TV host, media expert, and entrepreneur, so you can build a brilliant seven-figure brand. Because when you're inspired, you inspire others. So let's go. My guest today actually came into the Inspired Living community after seeing me at an event, and she was ready to depart from her corporate career, her incredibly successful corporate career. She found herself in a place where she wasn't happy. She hadn't slept in on a Sunday in years. She was gaining weight and just in that place that she knew she had to do something different. Maybe you're in that place right now that you just know you have to do something different. And so she came on as a client to Inspire Living. And what I love about Laurel and her story is that she does not like being visible. She is a behind the scenes gal, and yet she made the commitment back in 2019 to be visible. And since then, she has her own radio show with an international following. She has a podcast. She is finding her voice and realizing her reach when it comes to her videos. Her business is growing. And quite honestly, the woman is on fire. If you're in a place in your business right now where you too feel timid or scared or that critic is just so loud when it comes to showing up, you are going to absolutely love this interview. And if you're in a place with your business where you need support with building team, or you're looking for a career transition expert that can really guide you to make the right decisions in your life right now, Laurel Rutledge is your lady. You are going to love this interview with my client and friend, Laurel Rutledge. Laurel Rutledge, One of my favorite people. I am so excited to dive into this conversation today. Thank you for being with me, my friend. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Well, it's great because you have a very successful podcast, The Rutledge Perspective. And I have a different perspective of you, Laurel, because I've had the blessing and opportunity to work with you behind the scenes, to see you really move from the corporate space into entrepreneurship and then making the decision unbeknownst to you. <laughs> no, you yes. made it, but but still, I think there's two sides um, to be more visible in your business and what that's yeah. created. So today I'm really excited to just look under the hood of your life and what yeah. you've created in the last year and a half. I'm excited for you because you have so many amazing things going on, but it took a leap of faith. And I think there's a lot yes. of people that take the plunge into entrepreneurship from the corporate space. I've never had that experience, but as you know, many people, you know, find themselves at one point where they realize they're not living their dream and they want to go off and start doing that. So let's go back to that tipping point for you. And yeah. And what was it that made you leave a very successful corporate career and launch out into the deep sea of entrepreneurship? Yeah. You know, and it's such a crazy question because there are so many people who, who do make this decision and, and you'll have the people that support you. And then the people are like, are you nuts? Do you know what you're doing? Do you, you know how much money you're making? You know, this role that you have. And for me, it was really I reached a point where I just wasn't me. I was tired. Mm. I wasn't happy. I was, I hadn't slept on a Sunday in five years. And I'm not a person that avoids conflict, but I was in constant conflict. And so I will tell people who are in corporate, who are listening, the trauma is real. The struggle is real. And I'm always careful with using trauma or PTSD or those kind of things. Because when we think about that, we think about the people who have served in our military and some of the things that they've seen, or we think mm-hmm. about people who have escaped really abusive relationships or really, really that that trauma that we see that's mainstream. But when you are in an organization over your career, whether it's the last one you left or one you've been in before, where there's constant microaggression, where you're constantly trying to prove that you're not stupid, even though they hired you because they know you weren't, right. where you're fighting a culture that is so contrary to your value system and how you're aligned mm-hmm. that you start to question yourself and think you're crazy. Right. I'm here to tell you, you're not crazy and you have a choice. And so I reached the point 
December of 2016, I thought, what am I doing? I'm not enjoying my family. When I am with them, I'm not present. Mm. I've gained 50 pounds. I'm not sleeping. I was miserable. And it just hit me at that moment. And I said, but I have a choice. I have a choice and I right. choose me. And, yeah. and I just said, whatever happens, I'm going to step out on faith. Lord, just, I got to go. And so help me make a way. And yeah. here we are. <laughs> By the way, I do have to say, you look pretty darn fabulous. You look happy. You look you yeah. look like you're kind of like reached your zone. And I think yeah. here's the thing that I think is eludes most people is that you you take the jump and then it just all shows up yeah. for you. Yeah. And yeah. it's really, I mean, I hate to say the word journey because it's so overused, yeah. but it really is. Can you share yes. with us maybe a few of the pivotal sure. things that you have learned since right. jumping off? Like what have been some of the key components or aspects that you've learned that have helped guide you into where you are right now? Yeah, I think there are probably three key things. One of those is grace is so important. Mm -hmm. Grace is number one. You have to give yourself some grace because there are going to be so many things that come at you that are unexpected, that are different. When you're taking this leap, whether you are single like me or whether you've got a family at home, when you are doing this entrepreneur thing and it's just you, all of that head trash that may have been there, but you were able to bury comes right to the forefront. And yeah. so- Like on a loudspeaker and a microphone, yeah. right? Like right. just right. Right. a microphone, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like warning Will Robinson, right? <laughs> and so you've got to give yourself some grace to see that, understand it, feel your way through it, and then decide how you're going to process that and move. And whether that's having a therapist or having a, a, a village, whatever it is, but give yourself some grace. Mm -hmm. The second thing is corporate is very different than entrepreneurship. In, the in what way? Okay. In the tactics, right? So the language on the surface is the same, but the way you show up, how you show up, and what it means is very different. So having spent my time in corporate, I know all the language, right? I know marketing, I know sales, I know infrastructure, I know setting up a budget, I know all of these kind of things. But when you put that in a context of an entrepreneurial space, especially if you're talking a service business and not a product-based business, there are many, many more things that you've got to think about that may not have necessarily been at the forefront of what you did before. Right. Even if you were a marketing specialist or you were an accountant or you were you know, HR like me, there are things you understand fundamentally, even because I came out of professional services, I worked at one of the big firms. So I even get the services piece, but it is different when it is just you and social media. And you're just trying to <laughs> exactly. put your brand say, out there. You have a corporate team, you have, you yeah. know, all the different divisions that are handling different things. And when you, exactly. you know, really, you know, launch into entrepreneurship, you're really from mm -hmm. the beginning, you're a solopreneur yes. trying to put these pieces of a puzzle together that yes. you've never done before. Exactly. And you've got to, to be okay with the fact that you need to, like number three is be able to say, okay, I don't understand. And I remember specifically having a conversation with a coach after having done some like boosted posts and we were having a conversation about why they didn't work. And I remember she said, did you boost a post or did you do an ad? I'm like, I don't know. I just paid some money. And at that point I said, you know what? I'm going to do what I always told people to do in corporate, which is one, ask the question. I said, so I'm going to tell you, we're going to assume that I know nothing. And you're not going to hurt my feelings. So assume I know nothing and let's start from zero. And by doing that and giving people permission to teach you something, because none of us knows everything, right. it really opened up that door for me to be able to say, okay, here's what I mean when I say, you know, email, and here's what they mean when they say funnel or nurturing campaign, and here's how that connects. And so giving yourself grace understanding that there is real trauma, but you have a choice and then being ready to learn something that's mm -hmm. different and putting your ego aside to say, if I really want to build this business, then there's stuff I need to learn and finding those experts that can help you. Those are probably the the top three learnings for me that really said, Laurel, if you say you're going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, you better go. You better <laughs> you go. Do this. And yeah. it is so different when you are a leader in a corporate space and then you find yourself yes. kind of on this island going, okay, now what do I do? You know, you're really proficient and efficient yeah. at the skill in which you teach and you do, but mm -hmm. running a business, especially with everything online, is very different. And you made a yes. decision back in 2019. So we've worked together now for quite a few years. Yeah. You were a part of our luminary leadership group, yes. um, which is an amazing group of just soul filled women coming together mm -hmm. um, who really want to build influence brands. And we've been working with you for a while. And I have to say it, it wasn't overnight, but there was a flip that went off in you. 
yes. that you took the Kool-Aid that I had been asking you to drink <laughs> around being visible and, and yes. committed to that. I want to talk mm-hmm. about, because you're someone who like is very clear, you don't like being on camera. You yes. don't want to be visible. You're a behind the scenes kind of gal. And I know yeah. that someone's listening right now who feels the exact yes. same way. And yet you decided 2019, I'm going to be visible. I want to hear yes. about that decision, what helped you make that decision and what has happened yeah. since you made that decision. So yeah, it's been it's been an incredible journey because that's the other piece around that grace and learning something, right? From experts is even as I looked at morphing my business, because you have been with me for so long and kind of the HR piece, and that is my expertise. And I'm a different kind of HR person, right? Because I've got an accounting degree and an MBA and I come at it from a business perspective, but that visibility piece, I mean, I didn't even have a picture on LinkedIn on purpose. And I was only on Facebook because my salsa group, that's where we did our, you know, put all the routines when we had to practice. That's the only reason I was on social media. I was like, Instagram, I'm not doing that. Right. So, but in 2019, I said, you know, but here's the difference. When I decided to do this business, I remember sitting down with you in Manhattan beach. Cause I said, okay, we're going to kick off. And I said, I'm going to come see you. You're like, really? You want to do it in person? I'm like, absolutely. And I remember sitting there and we were talking about what the business was going to be called. And we said, well, you know, it's you, you're the brand. So just use your name. And in 2019, when we came together and we're setting the intentions, I said, if this is really going to be me and it's going to be my name, people don't know me because I've never been out there. Mm-hmm. I just haven't been on purpose. And so if I'm going to build, I heard your voice. People need to be able to find you. If you want them to work with you, they have to be able to find you. And if you're not there, they can't find you. And so I said, 2019, I'm just going to write it down. I'm going to be more visible in 2019. And that meant for me doing more video, getting the podcast going, doing some lives, taking more pictures, all of these kind of things that I still don't love, but- <laughs> But you're learning to like them. But I'm learning to like it. And, <laughs> and it's actually becoming, because I had to put it in the context of, it's not about me, yes. which is my philosophy around how I work with people. My being visible- is not about me. My being visible is about service because okay. I can't serve hold it up. If hold it up. Me. I mean, we can <laughs> we can say this and preach it from the top of the mountains, yeah. but I know Laurel that someone needs to hear that one more time. Yes. So I'm going to give you the mic one more time to repeat that. Yes. So I had to remember that being visible was not about me. Being visible was about service, and I couldn't serve without being visible. Amen, sister. And it made a difference, right? Because then when I watched videos, because I've been on camera and been on big stages and stuff before just because of my roles. But the thing about the camera for me was I hate seeing myself on camera. That's head trash, right? Oh, why did I do that? I need, I got 50 more pounds on me, all that stuff that's absolutely irrelevant. But when I flipped my mindset to say, this is about service, then I could focus on am I delivering the message I wanted to deliver? Right. And that helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. And so because I started doing that and I started saying yes to things, this radio show came up and at the end of, yeah, at the end of last year, because it'll be, it'll be a year in March. I can't believe it. At the end of, yeah, at the end of 2019, I was a guest on a show. Somebody just called me up, a network person and said, Hey, I need somebody on this radio show. Will you do it? And I'm like, sure. And I went in to do the radio show, didn't know the radio show streamed live, had no idea. And I was just going to go. And I thought, no, Laurel, you've never met these people. Look nice. You know, <laughs> you better put yourself together. Yeah. <sighs> Thank goodness I did. Thank goodness. It was live yeah. stream. <laughs> and, and the producer after that said, hey, you know, I really think you need to do a show. I was like, sure, man, let me think about it. And the next time we had a luminary thing, I said, oh yeah, they asked me to do this show. And everybody was like, are you nuts? You absolutely need yeah, to say I yes. love that you actually came and was like, should I do this? I right. <laughs> and we're like, are you bananas? Like, are you bananas? The answer is yes. The answer is yeah, yes. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And so I went to do the show. I called her back and we met in January and I said, Hey, if it, you know, if there's still a place, you know, I don't know. <laughs> and she said, absolutely. And we started on March 3rd of 2020. And now the show it's, it's internet radio and it's live every week. So I am live. Even if I do nothing else, I am live on camera every week for an hour. The show now reaches a ton of people nationally, but also is reaching, glo- reaching globally. So Philippines and India and Australia and Spain and you know all of these places just delivering a message of transformation and a message of you can mm-hmm. do this. You're not alone. 
I'm not perfect. We're going to talk the truth here. We're going to speak truth to power. We're going to be authentic. We're going to be vulnerable. We're going to have some fun, but we're just going to chit chat. And so it's been, it's been fantastic. And through that, doing more video for my podcast, getting back to doing that because I had kind of tapered off and doing some lives. And every time I put a picture up, every time I do a live, anything that shows me, the feedback is like exponentially greater, right. exponentially. I have such a Which big still smile get, on my is. face. <laughs> if people are listening and they can't see me, like the smile is literally ear to ear because yes. you made this decision to be visible. Like somehow, some way this radio show found you, right? Yes. They asked you yeah. to do your own show. Here you yeah. are almost a year in with international exposure. You're yes. going live. You've been featured in magazines. Right? Mm-hmm. All of these opportunities are showing up. You're getting clients yeah. slowly but surely. Yes. And it all came down to you making the decision. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, you wouldn't weren't waiting for someone to find you. You right. know, you had to say in order to be found, you know, I have to show up. And it is so important right now, Laurel, that someone hears this yeah. because just like you, they know they bring incredible skills and assets to the world, to people, mm-hmm. that they can really transform lives. I mean, you are a- right. amazing at what you do in not only the Thank HR you. space, but in the career transition space. I mean, you really are an, a- an expert in that. And you know, you needed to find a platform and yes. you did. So tell me about what's next with that. And now that you yeah. have committed to being visible, how do you feel? What does it feel like yeah. now compared to what it felt like in the beginning. Sure. It's, you know, it's again, that whole grace thing and, and coming into your own. So, you know, decided to be visible in 2019, started doing all of that stuff. And it wasn't until probably the end of 2020, probably that fourth quarter of 2020 that I thought "Mm, something still isn't, it's not yet me. It's not yet me. And then I completely redid like the about section on my page. And I'm like, look, here's what we're going to do, right? I'm your biggest cheerleader. We're going to speak truth to power. I got you. It's all the stuff that I actually say. Mm. And so that visibility, piece also enabled me to say, yes, I am still very professional. You can take me into corporate, right? Because that's where I came out of. I can button up real nice for you. I can button up real nice. And there are so many other pieces to me that make me really good at what I do. And so that ability to actually, because it's my business, show up all of me, which yes. many times in corporate, and that's why I work with so many women and can want to continue to work with so many women and men. I just, you know, work with a lot more women that are having that challenge in corporate America, especially women of color, because you don't bring your whole self to work. You put the mask on, right? right. You only show certain pieces. So you are acceptable. And so other people are comfortable. Yeah. And I thought, this is my business. This is my business. And so if you want to work with me, then you need to know who I am completely. Now, that doesn't mean air all your dirty laundry. That's not what I'm talking about. But, you know, really show all sides of your personality and yeah. all of your perspectives because that's what people need to see. And so for me, it is really as I moved into the end of 2020 and 2021 and all that madness that happened in 2020. I'm like, you had a lot of content. <laughs> you I had, had a lot, lot of content. Of content. Yeah. I had a lot of content and a lot of things that said to me, this is the space that I want to be. This is how I want to be visible. This is how I want to show up. And it is, I mean, this is while it is technically four, just because when I set my LLC up and made it four years, this is really three years in this business. Mm -hmm. And this is really now finally getting to be so much more who I am and how I show up and what I want to say and how I deliver that from the standpoint of the pain that I've felt and the conversations I've had with hundreds and thousands of people from the plant floor to the boardroom about the pain that they're feeling and how we can move that and morph that. And in order for people to know it's okay, I have to tell them it's okay and tell them I've been in that pain too. And I survived and my story is different, but just because my story isn't tragic doesn't mean it wasn't difficult. And if your story isn't tragic, it doesn't mean it's not difficult. Yes. And so I just don't want anyone to sit in that overwhelm and sit in that place where they think they're crazy because you're not crazy. You're not crazy. And you know, you said something, I mean, obviously I'm not a woman of color, but I think all women at some point feel like they have to put on a mask, you know, a mask to please, you know, I need to show up a certain way. I'm scared of being judged. What if someone doesn't like me? What if I say something that, you know, ruffles too many feathers? Right. And I know in our conversations, Laurel, that when you were more raw, 
and more vulnerable. Like some of your posts, like they went viral, like they went crazy yes. because your real true self, it pours through what you do and other people feel it. And they are, mm -hmm. they're like, they're with you. They're your ally. They're your friend. They're your champion. And you can't do that with a mask on. You know, no. have you seen that as well? I know you have. So talk a little bit about that because that was I not have. easy for you because no. you talked about you like to hide a little bit and yes. you were very private. So yes. I know it took courage Mm -hmm. for you to write some of the things that you have, for you to be vocal about some mm -hmm. of the things that you feel and that you've experienced. Yeah. What has that been like yeah. for you? You know, it's been, one, it's been freeing. It's been absolutely freeing. And it is such a dance that we, we walk um, as women and in particular as women of color of that whole code switching. You get so programmed to be appropriate. And 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 don't get me wrong. There are like, you don't wear sweats to a board meeting, right? <laughs> there really is such a thing. But as you can wear them on Zoom. <laughs> you can on Zoom from the bottom down, right? And so I, there is such a thing as being appropriate and knowing your own stuff, right? Sure. We, we, we all have stuff and we got to acknowledge that and know what's appropriate and what's not. And and it is really, really critical, I think, to, to truly be who you are. And so there were two things that happened for me that were that I was just shocked by. One was um, I'm originally from Odessa, Texas, and we had a mass shooting in Odessa. And after that, I just wrote this thing called I'm from Odessa. And it just it just happened. I just felt like I needed to say something. And I did. And a friend of mine said, Oh my gosh, Laurel, can you can you make that public? Because my my personal Facebook page is still private. And I said, sure. And then I didn't because <laughs> I'm like, I'm I don't know. Do that. I want that to go out there? I'm not yeah. doing that. Right. And then I went back to her like two hours later. I'm like, can you share it yet? No, and I hadn't done anything because I'm thinking <laughs> if she still wants it, then I'll have to think about it. Right. And she's like, right. no, and I, I've been wanting to share it with people. I'm like, so I made it public. And I mean, out of the woodworks, people who grew up in Odessa and were living somewhere else, people I didn't know, people who knew my dad and my family. The mayor's daughter actually reached out and said the mayor wanted to read it on the air. I, it was incredible. just it was Come on. incredible, but it was just, it was how I felt about the situation and about my town. And then when the George Floyd murder happened, I was actually planning to do a check-in for Luminary because you were telling me, hey, we haven't heard from you guys, you know, do a check-in. I planned to do like five minutes. Hey, here's what's up. I'm cool. One, I went live on my business page and not in luminary. So I hadn't intended to do that. And that five minutes turned into 25. Mm. And the same thing happened because I was very, uh, I wasn't ugly and I wasn't nasty, but I was real because I was very upset and I was very angry for a very long time. And still, you know, had that slow burn sure, um, of course, and, and really kind of a, a slow simmer around, okay, I'm not going to bury this like we've always been taught to do. I'm going to talk about this and then I'm going to have to figure we can't out how to put it. this yeah. in context. We yeah. can't. Yeah. And how to put it in context and still function, which yeah. is the hard part. And so, right. you know, so there are things like that that have come out, things I've said, things I've posted that have been much more real around how you're feeling and how you show up. The same thing on the radio show. Every time I talk about stuff, people are like, please say that again because nobody has said that. <laughs> Take and, me to and, church. Which or... I can't do. Yeah. Right. Because I can't, you know, I can't remember what I said, but it's, <laughs> it's, really important to just be who you are. And so for me, that's been a big piece, you know, the, yeah. the getting to the expertise of how to show up, right? How to be on camera, how you talk about things, how you are authentic, that came that expertise that came from you, and then deciding to just do it and figuring it, it, they either love you or they hate you, but they love or hate you now. And yeah. if they don't know you, then they can't think anyway. So <laughs> do it. It and doesn't you know matter. And there's, just, there's, there's just going to be unhappy people in the world who have yes. nothing better to do than to troll right. other people and write nasty things. Yes. And I think that yes. it's just so important. And you hear the word authenticity so much. And mm -hmm. I really encourage, if you're listening right now, to go follow Laurel, listen to her Thank shows, you. listen to her podcasts. I mean, you won't find a more refreshing perspective I love that. And just so authentic. And, but yeah, you, you had to get comfortable with that. And there's a, I think a, a yeah. part of self censorship, you know, yes. that you're like, Ooh, do I write that? Do I not write that? Do I say that? Do I really mm -hmm. say that? Or do I not say yeah. that? And I think that you have yeah. to just be really true to you. And like you said, you know, I wasn't ugly, but I was real. And mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. the space that we can all live. I yes. really do. I think that you can be real and, yeah. and not be nasty. That's what yeah. I would like to think anyway. So tell I me agree. about surrendering to the flow yeah. and, and what that has meant to you. Share that Ooh. with us. 
That's been a big one. You know, I, everybody picks words for a year, right? And I had last year was clarity, conviction, and compassion. And, and that really, who knew how timely that would be, right? For for 2020. Yeah. And then as I, I was having a crisis, right? Like a crisis of confidence, a crisis of what am I doing? Do I just need to go get a job? I mean, all of that kind of stuff towards the end of the year. And I just sat down and I, cause I have, I have an amazing therapist. I've had her for forever. And I sat down and I said, okay, I just, let me, I'm just going to pray about this. I'm just going to meditate about this. I'm just going to sit in this space and say, what is mm-hmm. this? Cause this is coming from out of nowhere. What is this? And I just heard this word surrender. Now I, I am a woman of faith and I'm also a woman that knows myself well enough to know that God has to burn a bush for me. I don't read signs. I mean, you need to tell <laughs> There's me. There's no little tapping to. on the shoulder. No, yeah. no, no. It's got to be big. <laughs> yeah. And so this was that clear, like just surrender, like just surrender and just be in the flow. And so that for me was my word for 2021. And, and it's not surrendering from the standpoint of giving up. I just give up. No, no, no. It is about what is moving and really acknowledging and understanding that flow and sitting intentionally in that flow, even if that flow feels uncomfortable and not the never surrender to that's been like taken over that we're never going to surrender in that fight, 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 fight. Right. Mm, that's not what I mean. That real either. masculine energy. Yeah, yeah. That just, you know, it's really about when you get really crazed, like I do, I get these whirling dervish. I got so much going on and it almost paralyzes you. Yeah. You pause. Surrender to the flow. Big deep it's breath. really supposed to be going yeah. on. You know, take a deep breath, get up a minute, take 15 minutes, take 30 minutes, whatever, walk away, get grounded again, and then come back. Because if you surrender and you're in the flow, it just happens. It just yeah. happens. And you still have to be in action. You still have to be intentional. But you also, when you're surrendering to the flow, you're not so thrown off when things have to change or shift. Mm -hmm. It is, nope, I still know my end goal. I still know where I'm going. Just if I'm in flow, yeah, that didn't feel like it was the right thing, but here's this other thing that's showing up. Let me explore that. And that may make some more sense. And that is happening a lot with what I'm doing, with changing up what my about section looks like, right? Changing up and putting more pictures, getting more pictures, all of those things that really just are in flow to say, no, this is where you want to be. And really thinking, I love this radio show. I am stunned. (laughs) Stunned <laughs> from the, the woman who didn't want to be visible. <laughs> I hate being visible. And I love this show. If she told me tomorrow, Laura, we're going to stop the Rutledge perspective. I would be devastated, <laughs> devastated. <laughs> and I love it. And I love doing the podcast and I love interviewing people. And it's just been a real surprise to step into that space and to also own the fact that I really, I do enjoy working with people one-on-one and my energy level is so much better and I can serve so much bigger if I have a few one-on-one that I can really focus on, but then have these groups where I can really spread the energy and they are able to take their energy and energize others. And so that, again, that's surrendering to the flow, right? It's not a change. I'm not like not doing one-on-one and and all I'm doing is groups, but that enabling groups and having a real focus on that, because that is an ability to serve bigger and broader. Absolutely. And you can have, you can have, you can affect so much greater change when yes. you're working in groups than one-on-one. I mean, there's a level of intimacy yeah. in a one-on-one that I still love. Yeah. It's why I have the luminaries because, uh, man, yes. do I still love that. But you can't yes. scale and grow one-on-one. And you said right. a couple things. I just want to circle back to you really quickly, Laurel. Mm-hmm. You said three years. In yeah. my experience, 23 years as an entrepreneur, yeah. three years. It's like the yeah. tipping point. It's like either mm-hmm. you're feeling the momentum or you're not, I feel. And yes. I feel like things really, it now, if you're doing the work, right? And yes. you've been consistent, you know, it really is that three to five years that yeah. you're building and the momentum starts to come when mm-hmm. you've been visible for a year and you're doing yes. all the things. And it takes a good year to even figure out what in the world that is yeah. and what the message yes. is and who you're trying to reach and who you yeah. are in this new space. So if you're right. listening and you just started your business and it feels hard and it feels like a struggle and you feel like you're literally pushing a boulder up a hill yes. every single day, it does get easier. Yeah. And then there's there's different boulders that you start to push, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just, I want to just honor that and let you know that that's completely normal. And that's, yes. that tells you that you're in a really good place. The fact that you're feeling that momentum and things are getting clear and you feel in your zone. And for me, learning to surrender to the flow has been huge because I love to make stuff happen. Yes. I am a manifester. I have an idea and I'm like, let's get her done. And yes. sometimes it just doesn't happen. And sometimes, you know, a pandemic hits and, you know, you have a baby at 45 and you're yeah. like, and I think like, I love what you said. It's not about giving up. It's about adaptability. It's about yes. feeling, feeling in your body 
Am I in the right place? Am I going mm-hmm. in the right direction? And then yeah. being able to course correct and just, and I think, you know, and even Goriana, who has this amazing jewelry line, and when she talked about it, brilliant, like the key to building her multi million dollar brand, she's mm-hmm. like, it was being adaptable. If someone yes. didn't like a, one of the, the products, we, took it out and gave them something else. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of really becoming a great business owner and CEO is exactly that. So I want to, sh- I just want to say thank you for sharing that yeah. because it's really powerful. Absolutely. And it's something that most people don't talk about because it is, mm-hmm. you know, go big, go home, you know, yeah. go, go, go. And I think there's something really important when it comes to just being in the flow and being able to let go of something when the timing's not right Mm -hmm. and being able to fight for something when you know it is. I agree. And, and it's funny because I, I had said, you know, this, this month of January, I wanted to do, you know, hustle and flow and grind and all that kind of stuff. And that's what I wanted to talk about. And so two things came out of that. One, there was this realization in, in being in flow and I heard it from Kim Coles, right? She, she did a presentation and she's like, we put pressure on ourselves and we're seeing hustle and grind and work harder and all these memes about if you want it bad enough, you'll just work harder, 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 harder. And words matter, right? And so what are, what pressure are we putting on ourselves managing our grind and comparing it to someone else's? So I thought, right. I need to talk about that. But then this surrender word happened, like surrender to the flow. And I did keep talking about kind of hustle and grind, but it's so much morphed into this context of one, we had the sixth that happened, right? At, at the Capitol in the US. And then we had the 20th that happened. And this whole idea of surrendering to the flow, what does your hustle look like? What does your grind look like? Mm-hmm. Does it really mean that you are now working 40, 50, 60 hours a week still for your own business. Because I will tell you, part of surrendering to me and getting rid of this head trash and really understanding was a recognition after (laughs) 10 years of therapy, a recognition (laughs) that when I talked about success and having a seven-figure business, not because I want to live on seven figures, but because I want to make a seven-figure impact on the world at a minimum, but I was connecting down success to pain. Because I was really successful in corporate, and that was some of the worst pain I've ever felt. Right? That is so Personal, interesting, Moral. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so surrendering to that, understanding it, and disconnecting—you mm-hmm. know—that those words, hustle, grind, move, dig in, develop, get her done. For me, got to that pain piece. Because yes. success, grind. If you're going to be successful, you got to grind. If you're going to make it work, you got to hustle. If you got to, you know, not just how you associated pain to success yes, with all of that. Yeah. And so surrendering says, wait, I am in flow. Deconstruct. I am living my purpose. <laughs> yeah. Deconstruct yeah. this stuff because this would not have mm-hmm. been here. The things would not be showing up that God has planned for me if this wasn't where I was supposed to be. That I need to pay right. attention and I need to be active and I need to be intentional, but I don't need to be feeling like if I'm not working 80 hours, 70, 80 hours a week, like I was before, that I'm not being purposeful and I'm not going to be successful because that's not truth. That that's is That's head not trash. True. Yeah. That's a story we tell ourselves. Yeah. Well, that's amazing insight that you get there because, you know, you would have kept bumping up against that wall if you didn't come to that realization and be able to disassociate, you know, those two Mm -hmm. things because Mm -hmm. you can be successful and it not be painful too. Yes. 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 And it's, and it really happens because Monday I got in the zone, you know, and when you get in the zone, you're like, I don't want to stop. Right. Right. Cause 'cause I'm in the zone. And then I finally was like, okay, you have got to eat. So I got up to eat (laughs) and I was like, okay, you got to get started again. But I didn't realize once I stopped how tired I was. And I went back and I said, but Laurel, you've already worked a 12 hour day. Stop it. You could take a break. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Well, talking about, you know, hustle and success, I mean, you really help people in two different ways when it comes to life and business. Can you share a little bit of that with us? Sure. So you have this incredible background in HR and then you have this incredible (laughs) background, you know, in finance and everything that you do and career transition. So I want, I want people to understand how they can work with you. Yeah. So, so there's a couple of things I do and it all comes under the two pieces that I think are key, whether you're building a business or building a career and that strategy and people, and you don't know 
who you need to help you get where you need to go unless you know where you're going, right? So Mm -hmm. if you are building a business and trying to decide, do I need to put somebody on? How do I put somebody on? How do I build this culture? I work with business leaders to really think through from the very beginning, what is my business strategy so I can develop a good people strategy to help me get that business strategy done. So good. Talking through the details of that. Yeah, Yeah. you know, because and it's not, yes, the HR stuff can be a pain in the butt. It's not rocket science, but it can be painful and you have to be detailed because it can get you in trouble. But it starts before that. It starts before that as strategy. And then the other place I really help people is in that leadership and career development space, whether you are a leader in corporate trying to figure out how you're going to run this team or how you're going to build it and how do you show up the way you want to show up, or you're in transition and feeling like I felt, you know, do I need to find something else or do I need to just stay where I am? Because for me, it is not my job to judge you. Right. This is a no judgment zone. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what job you need to have. What I'm going to do is be able to connect dots for you when we have the conversation about who you are, what you want, where you are right now, and then what you're willing to do to get there. And that may be that you're in a space right now to just sit still where you are. And that's okay. Because we always <laughs> surrender to the flow. Yes. Surrender to the flow. <laughs> just sit where you are. But if you have a plan, you can sit where you are because you know why you're doing that. Ooh, and it's yeah. when we don't know why we're doing what we're doing that it starts to be, you know, hard and we start to think we're crazy and we start to think we're stuck. And that's you're not stuck. in anything in life. You're whether you're anything. running your business or you're in corporate or yeah, when you lose yes. your why, you just you lose it. You lose it. And so yeah. it's really for me all about helping people no matter where they are get really clear on what they're trying to do and what they want and then help them surround help them surround themselves with the right people to help them get there, yeah. whatever that looks like. That's why I call it a village. It takes a village. It, took it a village does for take this one. So. a village. There <laughs> is no village. doubt yeah. about it. So yeah. if, if uh, someone wants to get in touch with you and learn more about the services, Laurel, how do they do that? The best way to get in touch with me is just go to my website. Everything is there, laurelrutledge.com. And so you can get to me through that. You can find my podcast there. You can find my radio show there. Anything Laurel Rutledge is on laurelrutledge.com. That's the easiest way to do that. Perfect. We will post that in the show notes. You know, Laurel, you have been with us in, talk about tribe in the Inspired Living community for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you just briefly share, you know, maybe some of the takeaways or benefits that you have gotten from being a part of this group or community? Absolutely. And, and, you know, and I did, I started, I, for those who are listening, I actually met Carrie at a different event. And I knew when I started this business, it's funny, we know what we know, but then we, you know, just have to take a leap to do it. And I thought I speak all the time, but I know I'm going to have to be on camera. And then again, God puts things in your place. When you are ready to be taught, the teacher shows up. Mm -hmm. And I went to this thing and probably the best thing I got out of this thing was meeting Carrie because it was all about video and being on camera. And I thought, "Mm." (laughs) Find the commitment to be visible. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And so it really, so, so that to me was a foundational piece that I've gotten in working with you guys is really showing up on camera. Again, I've done speeches, I've done all that kind of stuff. I don't have any problem being in front of people. I don't like the camera. Mm -hmm. And so being able to get comfortable and not so much hate the camera, but change my perspective on why I'm on camera in the first place. Yeah. The other thing was really the, the broadcast your brilliance piece that really dug deep into, okay, if you're out there, let's talk about what that looks like. Let's talk about how you connect all the social media platforms. Let's talk about your messaging. Let's talk about how you are prepared to be ready. So with the radio show that came through networking, but I know I would not have been ready to really dig into that had I not kind of gone through that whole broadcast your brilliance piece and think, yeah. oh, I can do this because I've had media training. I had it before in corporate, but I had a more focused one with broadcast your brilliance, which was just kind of that now I'm in an entrepreneur space. So I'm selling me, not the company I work for. So that's a little bit different take. So there's been a lot, you know, and setting up infrastructure and getting the, the website done and all of that. But it's really for me been about the visibility piece because I yeah, know sure. that I would probably still be trying to figure out the visibility piece had I not had. <laughs> or you just would not have been visible, vi- visible. You know, I remember at all growing up in entertainment, we always said preparation meets opportunity. You know, and I feel like, you know, you got to start building that video muscle before you even Mm -hmm. think you need it because that's where the world is going right now. And Mm -hmm. when you are confident in that space, there are so many other things that will open up for you. And you're just such a great example of that. And Laurel, I'm so excited for you. I'm proud of you. I am cheering you on. I love who you are and what you're doing in the world. So thank you for sharing your story and your insight with us today. I'm going to wrap it up with the question I always ask, which is what does inspire? Inspired living mean to you? Wow. So for me, inspired living means truly 
truly without a doubt, sitting in that space where you know that you are bringing all of you to whatever you're doing and that you are able to touch and reach and serve as many people as possible with the brilliance that you have and the heart that you have and the soul that you have. Mm -hmm. That to me is inspiring, not only for me, but my ability to inspire others, because I think that to whom much is given, much is expected. And if I'm not serving, then I'm not giving, that I'm not inspiring. And inspiring others is what inspires me. Mm, I feel you. And I just want to quickly <laughs> say that, you know, if you are really feeling, you know, scared or nervous about being visible and that critic, you know, that inner critic is just barking so loud, you know, go out there, right? Laurel's like, that is so me. <laughs> like, go out there and just talk to someone, you know, just record something and speak to that one person. Because I will agree, Laurel, that, you know what, it's the yeah. feedback that keeps you going. It's like, I'm feeding your soul, but you're feeding mine in return. And you can't get that reciprocity if you are stuck and you're not moving and you're you're just waiting, you know, for everything to line up perfectly, which as we know, there's no such thing. So <sighs> no. I so love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. you best love go you to laurelrutledge.com. <laughs> Check out the Rutledge Please. Perspective. You will absolutely love it. And I can't thank, thank you me. enough, Laurel, for being with us today. Yes. And I just thank can't you. wait to see what you continue to create in the world, my friend. Thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure and an honor to be a part of the Inspired Living Podcast. Thank well, you. your family for life, sister. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.